back what was the most popular item in the show and, and still, I believe, the most important item in the show. Roberta's in general brings us gorgeous, gorgeous, unique plants that are always so super easy to grow. But this is different. This is Asclepia. I, I know it more by its regular native name of milkweed, which where I grew up in Indiana would grow along the overpasses and the highways. But the native plant grew to be about six feet tall. And we would get a pretty good sized rainstorm in the end of May or in June, and it would kind of beat it down. And the plants were kind of scraggly. Well, what Robertus has done is they have hybridized it to make it a, I don't know if it's qualified as a dwarf plant, but these, these are much, much lower to the ground and the colors are substantially brighter and prettier. These are perennials that will come back year after year after year. You're getting two each of the orange, two of the white, and two of the pink. Now here's why I think it's the most important plant that we sell. It is the only plant in nature that the monarch butterfly will lay her eggs on. I don't know why that's the case, but it is. A monarch butterfly will cease to, to continue her offspring if she cannot find different colors of Asclepia or Milkwood. She lays her eggs on the underneath side of the leaf. And then that becomes food for the caterpillars when they hatch. In July of last year, monarch butterflies were added to the endangered species list. Uh, you're gonna meet a remarkable woman. And I hope I don't embarrass her. I, I love this girl. Uh, I've known the Waleen family for 30 years. She is the next generation. She's the future. And for years and years and years, she was preaching for people to start planting more milkweed because it meant that we could save the monarch butterflies. And you can do the same thing in your yard. You're getting six plants at a price tag that I think is reasonable under $37. I want you to meet Stephanie Walleen. Thanks for coming back. Stephanie, I didn't even know that we were gonna do a second airing of this. So thank you for coming back. I appreciate Absolutely, that. Dan. I'll talk about Asclepius all day long if I could. So it's absolutely no problem. So again, a monarch butterfly will not lay her eggs on any other plant? That's right. And you know, the reason is because once those eggs hatch, Dan, into the caterpillar, something actually happens that once the caterpillar starts to eat these leaves, their predators, such as birds, actually don't want to eat the caterpillar. It, they become poisonous to those birds. So this is sort of a mother yep. nature you know, mystery and, and honestly marvel that protects it's those a, monarch it's a butterfly symbiotic caterpillars. relationship that, exactly. that is almost impossible to fathom. These plants, mm -hmm. by the way, they, they smell great to us, but for some reason deer hate them. That deer yeah, will they are not rather, eat these. They are rather deer resistant. And, you know, not only are they going to be beautiful for us in the garden, Dan, like you were mentioning earlier, unlike maybe the wild Asclepius that you've seen that grows six feet tall and it's not very beautiful. This has been hybridized to grow only about three feet tall and give us more bold colors and larger flower umbels. So, yep. you know, it's, it's beautiful for us to grow and it's, it's a feast for our eyes in the garden. But truly by planting this, whether you have just a patio garden and with containers or acres of land, by planting this in your home or at your garden, you are truly doing your part in saving the monarch butterfly population, which since the 1980s, Dan, has declined upwards of 90% yeah. yep. and is now considered an endangered species. So truly, you know, this is providing food for the monarch butterfly caterpillars, and it's the only plant in the entire world that they will eat. So really, you know, by planting this, we are providing them food, and then we're going to help regenerate that population. Yeah, Stephanie, I didn't know that we, we even had a monarch butterfly migration that came up to this part of Eastern Pennsylvania. And oh yeah. Until I started planting Asclepia and they just showed up. Now, Absolutely. I, Kelly and I have lived on this farm for 21 years. And for the first 10 years, I had no clue that, that those butterflies were anywhere around. By mm -hmm. planting this, 
They just appeared. And they every do. They year have... I, I look forward to that reunion again of them showing up. They usually show up uh, in my area about the middle of May. Okay, awesome. Yeah, you know, we just saw a couple of photos ago, a photo of a caterpillar on a leaf. That was actually a photo that I took in my home in Southern California. And, you know, I want to I want to say that when you see these caterpillars, that is a good sign. That's yeah. exactly what we're looking for. They are meant to be eating these leaves, so don't be afraid. And, you know, if you can, consider picking up multiple collections of this, Dan, I agree. because I totally that plant agree. actually, I had, a, I had a few plants, I should say. In about one week, all of the leaves were gone. I had like 50 caterpillars at once, which oh, was so marvelous cool. to see. But I was like, oh, no, like they probably are still hungry. I should get them some more Asclepius. Yep. So I went down to my local garden center in California. And, you know, I couldn't even find Asclepius on the garden center shelves. They just didn't have any. Yeah. So consider picking up several collections of this. And I like to recommend planting a few uh, collections in containers, you know, maybe on your back patios where you'll be spending your evenings outside in the summertime. Yep. So that you can sit back and enjoy and see all sorts of pollinators fluttering in and out. And then maybe plant a collection further away from the house where it just kind of becomes a beautiful pollinator haven and specifically a monarch haven. I, I create, um, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a gardener, I'm a farmer. And there is a difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I create little gardens around my property uh, mm -hmm. because I want to create these little oases of, of color. Totally. And I've, on our property, we've got a stream with a walk bridge. And so I planted pollinators at both ends of the bridge because it's great wow. to walk by there and see the butterflies. I made a Absolutely. choice last year, every single one of my pollinators that I planted, I planted into big pots. And that way cool. I, we could move them around and create decorative mm -hmm. areas around the pool area in the, in the side yard. And I urge you to plant as many of these as you can. Uh, by the way, when those caterpillars come and they eat all the leaves, this is a perennial. The plant comes back every year. Oh, absolutely. Those leaves will start to regrow almost immediately. Yeah. So don't be afraid that your plant's going to die. It's actually one of the most winter hardy perennials that we offer. So yep. it can take temperatures down to like negative 35 degrees. So when I say that every garden in North America should be growing it, Every garden can grow it, too, because it can take almost any temperature in this country. Yeah. Again, where where I grew up, where you grew up, both in Indiana, mm -hmm. uh, yep. they would plant milkweed, which is the kind of the average name for a The common name. Mm -hmm. Common name. Uh, they would plant it by the uh, overpasses and highways, you know, Highway 37, 69, all right. in India, uh, because it, it just even the fumes from trucks wouldn't kill it. But it wasn't a pretty plant. It was leggy, the colors were washed out. Correct. The Asclepia that you hybridized, is it classified as a dwarf? Because I know this only gets about three feet tall. You know, I wouldn't go so far as calling it a dwarf because okay. it is still going to get three feet tall and once it's fully mature, but it is significantly shorter than that wild Asclepius, which could grow six to seven feet tall. And like you said, just isn't that beautiful to yeah. grow. These colors are just pops. Uh, the little caterpillars, by the way, I'm colorblind, but there's nothing about the color of a monarch butterfly caterpillar that tells you it's going to be that orange and black. The mm -hmm. caterpillar is yellow and black. It is. And, you know, it's paired in this photo with a swallowtail. And I just yep. want to mention, although the, the, the leaves of this plant are truly the only food for the monarch butterfly caterpillars, you will be providing nectar from the flowers for all sorts of pollinators. So you'll have Humming swallowtails birds. and yep. honeybees yep. and all sorts of birds coming. So it's truly going to be, like you were saying, doing impact gardening, Dan, this is going to be so impactful for all of our native pollinators. The very first time you see your own monarch butterfly in your own backyard, you, you have a feeling that you've done something right. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, how far should I plant these from one another? What I did, again, I, I bought several of them. Uh, you're getting six pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, the big pot that I've got here, and this is a representation of what you can expect to have uh, by, by next year. How right. far apart should you plant these? Yeah, so the plant that you have there, Dan, that's one of each color after about the second season. Yep. But you are getting 
six plants. So you're getting two orange, two yellow, and two pink. And, you know, once they're fully grown, they're going to be about three feet tall by maybe two feet wide. So I would space them about 18 to 24 inches apart so okay. they have enough room to grow into themselves. And I, and I but chose, I love your idea of mixed containers as well. I, I, what I did, I personally chose to do the orange together, like in mm -hmm. a little section, and the yellow yeah. as a little section right by. So you got this montage of color, but the totally. colors were kind of grouped together. That's just the way Absolutely. we wound up doing it. Uh, yep. we, just, we hit 18,000 plants, sets, the better yet. Uh, I can't do the math. What's 18 times 6? Don't Carrie, ask me. Carrie, my plants. producer, can do that in her head. <laughs> 108. That wow. mean, that's 108,000 Asclepia plants that are going to be planted this year that we didn't have last year. Wow. Stephanie, I should just say thank you to everyone who has placed their order and, you know, are reserving your plants now. And if you're watching this, thinking about it, you know, I just want to reiterate yep. how important it is for the monarch butterfly because you're really helping save an endangered species, which is so, sort of hard to digest. You know, you, you think about monarchs and you think that you see them around, but my niece who is 11 years old, she's actually never seen a monarch yeah. outside because they just aren't that many around anymore. The population yep. has declined upwards of 90%. So you are kind of doing like your good deed of the year. You're beautifying your garden. You're providing food for all sorts of pollinators and you're providing the only food source for the monarch butterfly by planting this collection. So I'm happy we've had 100,000 you know, plants that have been sold. It's not mm -hmm. enough. It's not. It's not enough. There, there are two different migrations of monarch butterflies that reached mm -hmm. America. Uh, right now, these butterflies are in Central America more than 2,000 miles away from where I live. And, and they come up through parts of, of California, Texas, and, and they split. And, and they wind up going to each side of the coast, and mm -hmm. then they work their way towards middle America. So right. there, there is a website, and I cannot remember what it is. Uh, I will go home tonight, and I'll write it down, and I'll put it on a piece of paper, and I'll bring it in. But awesome. you can actually do a Google search for tracking monarch butterflies mm -hmm. and you plug in your zip code and it will tell you using satellite photography where the monarch butterflies are that'll be coming to your area and lets you know where they are so it's it's the coolest thing and knowing that you've got these plants planted and thriving yep. before they get there is really going to be the key so. Absolutely, Dan. And once they are planted in your garden, it's almost like magic. Mother Nature, you know, these monarchs, they almost have radar goggles yeah. looking specifically for this Asclepius or milkweed. So you will start to see the caterpillars and the monarchs this very first year because they are truly hungry for this plant and you're doing your part in helping save the monarchs. And I just want to say one last thing is, you know, this was one of the easiest plants that we grow. It can take the coldest winters, the hottest summers. I live in Southern California. So if you're kind of on the fence and you don't think, you know, you have the greenest thumb, don't worry because this is one of really the easiest plants and it's going to give you such a great reward. Yeah, Stephanie, it not only can it take what mother nature throws at it, you can mm -hmm. be the crummiest gardener and still make this work. It can tolerate Absolutely. us. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had over 300 of you that pick, just picked it up. I wow. thank you. The hummingbirds, thank you. Thank you. The, the monarch butterflies. Stephanie, again, you are, you are amazing. I can't wait to see you and the rest of the family. Uh, we have what, Carolyn, two hours of outdoor living? Outdoor living, baby. Outdoor living. Uh, that is not only a great show, but uh, I get kicked out of the house a lot. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn, coming your way. I'll see you again in a couple days. Enjoy your, your, your warm weather if you've got it. Carolyn, come on, let's have fun.